got a rioter takeover at Madison Square Garden. The JTF and Sarah were using the site as a field hospital, but armed hostiles swarmed in. Now they've got the med staff as hostages. We need them, especially Jessica Candle, the virologist who was running the place. Find her, send her to the base, and clean up what's left. Yo guys, what's up? It's Warsprit. Got a little bonus video of the Division beta for you guys today. Hadn't really been following the game before this, so I went into the beta not expecting too much. I'd seen the trailer, the first trailer with the fancy graphics where everyone got super hyped, and then heard about the launch delays, the downgraded graphics as standard from Ubisoft games, and the loss of hype a little bit for the game. So, got in the beta, and then realised basically within the first 30 minutes that this game has some awesome potential. So what is The Division? At a glance, it's a third person shooter, action RPG with some MMO elements. You get missions, you get side missions, and these can be played solo or in instance based co-op multiplayer, either by friend invites or through matchmaking. You've also got a little PvP side to the game in an area called the Dark Zone, not in this video, but is again instance based, it's sort of a whole other side to the game where you can find extra loot and have fun killing real players, things like that. So you'll find some videos of what the Dark Zone is if you're interested on YouTube as well. What I'm showing off today is the first and only main mission of the beta, which is basically a, a kill all these bad guys, rescue this hostage doctor and then kill the boss bad guy, which is what a lot of the missions are going to be in the game. A lot of missions are go to an area on the map, kill the bad guys, other missions will be recover this piece of intel, usually with some bad guys surrounding it, and then there are some time trial missions, clear a building or area within a certain time limit, otherwise you fail the mission and then you have to start again. At least we're not collecting mushrooms, like five missions or so I've had so far in Blade and Soul. <laughs> so, I'm a big fan of shooters, but I'm also a big fan of action RPGs, things like Diablo, Skyrim and Fallout, games where loot plays a big impact. Um, and I want to talk about the RPG side of The Division first. So loot is a very important thing to me in RPGs. I love the part where you find that first rare item and you're like, oh man, I just got a rare item and it's awesome. I'm absolutely shredding all these bad guys for the next few levels and then you find that first epic item after that which is like oh man is an upgrade again and then you eventually kit out your guy in a full set of awesome tier gear and from what I got from the beta the loot system of the division is exactly like that you obviously find various types of guns but you also get to find various types of body armor things like knee guards chest plates and backpacks and then rarer items also can have special effects like one of the first guns I found had plus 10% bonus damage on headshots. Yes please, I'll take that. There's other loot items as well which are attachments for your guns. So attachments I found to be more of a personal preference rather than having big sort of stat affecting impact on your character. You can equip a laser sight to SMGs for better hip fire accuracy or you can equip a long range scope to give you that advantage of being scoped in when you're shooting guys, first person mode, and it sort of reduces the recoil as well of your, your bullets. So I think other attachments as well would give you more ammo capacity in your gun, so they're like small benefits, it's not like massive. As far as I got in the beta at least anyway, the beta was limited, very limited, maximum level 8, so if there are some super awesome attachments out there, I didn't get a chance to find them in what I played of the beta. Other cool thing about the game, sort of RPG element in it is that you can rerun missions at harder difficulties as well to basically farm the boss because the boss guy is always the guy that's going to drop the super awesome loot. So you can basically do this mission a couple of times and the first time you'll get a, a blue gun which is a rare version of a gun and then you'll do it again and you'll get a, a blue knee guard or you'll get a blue chest plate or something like that and you keep doing it and keep getting different bits of loot. It's not like the boss is dropping the same loot every time so you can do that if you feel like you're a little bit behind and you just want to find some cool loot. Obviously people in the beta were just farming the same area over and over again because that's what they were limited to. I don't know if it's going to be, if people are going to be doing that in the final game. Maybe when you get to like the last few missions you want to farm them so you can upgrade your character as much as possible obviously. When you get to the first base of operations the first thing you'll see is oh damn we Skyrim now because what you got 
is all your various armor, weapon and other gear store vendors where you can sell all your crappy loot and perhaps buy something if the shop guy has anything decent. I think I did buy some stuff from the shop guy so it wasn't like all those other games where the guys in the shop always have terrible loot and it's super overpriced. It was overpriced I would say that but it was pretty decent loot and the higher level you are the better the gear in the shops get because it's not like this is your base of operations, it's not like this area is what you get to and then there's going to be another area with higher level loot and then another area with higher level loot in the stores there. These guys are leveling up as you level up and their gear and their shops are leveling up as you level up, which is cool. You also have your personal stash at your base of operations, somewhere where you can store some cool loot you find that you maybe you don't want to get rid of, I don't know what else there could be that you want to store in there yet, maybe crafting materials because there is a crafting guy at the base which was not available in the beta so we didn't get to try that out but there will be crafting, a crafting system of some sort in the game. Crafting systems are awesome, it's where you get to basically break down all your crappy gear and then re-roll some high level weapons, stuff like that to try and get better stats on other things. And then the other thing is that there are ammo replen boxes at the base where you don't you don't buy ammo in the game you just get ammo in missions from these boxes and picking up ammo off of dead guys um, so you don't actually have to buy ammo at all unlike Fallout 4 where you're just always out of ammo but it's okay because I got a mod for that <laughs> where you can now craft ammo I think like crafting ammo in Fallout 4 was essential to have in the game that should have been in the game from the developers because otherwise there's no way you've got enough ammo to to keep playing the game without having to find some guy in some shop in Fallout which is going to sell you this ammo that you need but uh, we're getting off topic <laughs> so the other big thing I look for in action RPGs is character customization how you can make your character look and how you can customize the playstyle of the character to your liking for looks in the beta there wasn't much to it, it doesn't look like there's going to be much to it in the final game either, nothing on the level of Skyrim or Fallout and then whether there's going to be mods for the division or not to increase that customization capacity of characters that would be pretty cool but I don't know about that and the beta was basically male or female, different skin colour, hairstyles and face types and then you play. You can find clothes in the form of loot separate from your other gear so you have a wardrobe in the game where you can equip things like hats, boots, jackets, trousers. The final piece of character customization comes from your skill and ability choices. Again this was heavily limited in the beta but the two best skills I found included a 60 second cooldown pulse which reveals and highlights all enemies in a large area around you and then get an upgraded version of this perk means that you deal bonus damage to those highlighted targets. You also can get a heal burst ability which you can use on yourself or fire it towards teammates which heals friendlies in a small area which is very useful when combined with your health packs as well just to keep you topped up all the time. One really neat feature I liked was how you unlock these skills. You have to complete specific missions so you can upgrade areas in your base of operation. The one area in the beta was the medical base so you basically do these medical missions which is either find medical supplies or rescue these specific doctor people and this gives you points towards your medical area in your base which you can spend these points to unlock and upgrade areas of the medical bay in your base of operations. It's very simple, it might not sound simple but it's very simple. Once you upgrade it in the beta you unlock the second tier of skills and abilities so that's how you get that second tier where you can deal extra damage to highlighted targets with your pulse ability. It wasn't just unlocking extra skills, it was also a nice little visual upgrade to your base so that's a cool end goal to have in the game is building up, unlocking your full potential of your base and making it look super cool with all the, the fancy things that you can unlock there. Not quite on the level of settlement building in Fallout but it's a visual upgrade, it's sort of like the various artisans in Diablo 3 where you level them up and they get fancier tables and designs around about them, it's fancy sort of shop fronts. And then the final thing I want to talk about is the gunplay in The Division, which I was really surprised with. It felt fantastic 
which is not something I can say for many shooter games, especially in third person shooters. What I mean by good gunplay is the guns feel good. Uh, <laughs> that, I don't know really how you can explain that, but if you want to shoot something, you can shoot something. It's not like you're stuck in some crappy animations or you, you feel sluggish or anything. It feels smooth. The gunplay at least feels really smooth and you've got the like aim down sight guns as well. That's it doesn't it's not frustrating or anything like that. It's not jarring when you aim down sight and there's good sensitivity sliders for the game. You feel like you definitely have control over your gun in the game, which is great. As for the movement is good. Uh, you've got that little double tap spacebar to do a sort of dodge to the side. I didn't use it too much, but you've got sprinting, which you can have unlimited sprinting. I did find some problems with movement where I wanted to jump down a ledge. And I mean a ledge, I mean a really small ledge, like two stairs high. And you want to walk off the other end of these stairs and you can. It's like an invisible barrier. That was really annoying. You have to like either go down the stairs or I don't know how you do it, but you have to find something you can vault over. So the movement wasn't the best, but it didn't affect the game too much for me. So I'm pretty sure The Division is going to be a great game when it launches. And I hope you guys all enjoyed this little video and my look at The Division. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little gameplay in the background as well. Let me know what you thought. And thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye bye. a good start agents wish i could have had your back out there but i think we make a hell of a team anyway when you get back to the base we'll talk to candle and see what she can